Our interview subject today is Century House, located at 6208th Street in New Westminster, B.C. The interviewee is Joy Barkwell, manager of Century House, where the interview is taking place. The date is May the 2nd in the year 2000, and the time is 1.30 p.m. The interviewer is Dick Ramsey. Perhaps the best way to introduce Joy Barkwell is to quote a paragraph from Jack David Scott's book, Century House, 1958 to 1988. On page 27 of his book, Mr. Scott states, and I quote, Joy Barkwell joined the staff of Century House in April of 1980 as program leader and became director five months later. She was born and educated in the Okanagan at Summerland, taking a two-year diploma course at Caribou College in Kamloops. At the end of 1974, she went to Victoria and the following year joined the staff of the Oak Bay Recreation Department as a program leader. A two-year education training stint in Oak Bay introduced her to the operation of a seniors center. She found she particularly liked this work and applied for and obtained the post which had been newly created at Century House. Well, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to interview you and thank you also for the uh, book you gave me, Century House, New Westminster, 1958 to 1988, by Jack David Scott. I guess the, the first question I have is, who is Jack David Scott? Uh, Jack uh, was a longtime resident of New Westminster um, and a local practicing lawyer, I understand. And his wife, Pam, was a painting instructor here at Century House for a number of years and also very involved in the arts community of New Westminster. And I believe on Jack's retirement, he started following a personal interest, which was writing, and um, did a number of booklets of local interest, and I also know wrote The Four Walls of the West, which was a um, uh, historical um, story of the penitentiary prior to oh, its demolition. And so uh, he had, uh, you know, he was known as a, as a writer and author in our community and is interested in kind of the local history. So that's how we got Jack involved with So the he was invited to write this yes, from the commission? From, from the 30th anniversary um, committee. committee of I the see. Oh, that's very interesting. Well, that, that's good. I, uh, that I didn't know. It, I should have put that in the book. Well, you know? we should have covered it. <laughs> anyway, uh, you are the uh, the manager of Century House, right. and uh, how would you, very generally speaking, describe the purposes of this establishment? The purposes are outlined in our policies and procedures manual, and they had to be um, formally addressed as part of our registered charitable society. Uh, status and a number of other things and I think it's succinctly put together when we say that it's to provide within allocated resources year-round opportunities that will help satisfy the leisure, education and social needs of senior adults in New Westminster and to provide an environment where members feel self or feel positive self-worth through acceptance by others, belonging, recognition, contribution and achievement and where possible community information services and referrals for senior adults would be provided. Mm -hmm. Are there specific deeds that seniors have that others do not? I'm sure there are, um, and by varying degrees, uh, Dick. That would be more the needs of older people um, are also very depending on their age, depending on their living conditions and uh, and their connections with the family or, or their community. 
So mm -hmm. um, will you like me to identify some of those? Or well, well I, I, I'm interested in, in how you see their needs. Uh, as a, they're lonely people in many okay. cases, okay. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. Well, from the Century House perspective, an obvious, yeah. an obvious um, um, situation that the older people find themselves in is, is some kind of isolation or perhaps yeah. loneliness. Uh, majority of our members are uh, single. And by single, I would say mm -hmm. um, either widow or widower, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. divorced, or um, or have never married or whatever. But mm -hmm. our chances are living on their own mm -hmm. and often in an apartment. So therefore, they don't do mm -hmm. not have the uh, responsibilities or encumbrance of a of a, a residence. They have an apartment, and um, with with age and so on, they may be interested in having um, having access to, say, the nutrition services of our lunch program. Mm -hmm. um, the social part of it, of course, because there's always a bridge partner, there's always a crib partner. Mm -hmm. um, you can make a number of new friends if you're interested mm -hmm. in playing some team sports, mm -hmm. such as basketball or slow pitch baseball. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's teams to join in. Um, so that social connection is important. And then um, I believe just to inform our access to the community information and services that are available. And I don't think we can ever underplay the, the role that, uh, well, a senior center like Century House could play in just making sure that information is available or at least we know how to refer them on to access that. that uh, supports them living on their own and having a sense of independence or maintaining their own independence or and the opportunity to seek out assistance when and if they would require it. I would imagine also that uh, a great number of people don't want to be put on the shelf. That I'm not dead yet, thank you. <laughs> I know how to take responsibility. Don't treat me as a child. Uh, you know, one of the things that amazed me when and it, 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 further on, we were, we were talking about the, the opening ceremony. Is it Princess uh, Elizabeth or Princess Margaret? Mar Mar Princess Margaret. But I'm not up on my royalty. <laughs> uh, said, uh, isn't it amazing being in such a lovely place that people can sit down, look out the window, and watch the children play? Mm. Well, you know, it just, it's not an old age form. No. So people, you know, elderly people, I imagine, I guess I'm one of too, do not feel as if their life is older. Right. And they, they don't want to be true. Well, did you have any method or any, not you particularly, but the, the group, have any, at the time, any procedure trying to identify these needs, people in the community? Um, I would, you know, and based on some of the, the conversa or stories in Jack's book and the conversations I've had with other people, um, that were around when the center was first opened. I believe it was probably looked on in the way you've just described it, that it was an older person's place where people came to be quiet and were perhaps some of them more... But nice what I mean is, did they, what method did they use to f find that out? Is it just uh, a, a, a sort of a latent prejudice they had against older people, that older people have to be... Oh, I mean, I mean, uh, did they have a summary? Did they uh, 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 an interview process, talk with people? What would you like to do if there was a center here? This type of thing. How did they discover what they... You're not aware of that? No. no. I can tell you how we're, we have... We do that in the last... Oh, yes. Yeah. No, I was just thinking in the back. very beginning. Yeah. yeah. No. No. Okay. Uh, and I, uh, I imagine the... The uh, center is called Century House because it's uh, uh, commemorating the, uh, the uh, 100, uh, 1858, uh, the formation Same. of, uh, of uh, the province of British Columbia as a British colony in, up in Langley. Right. Um, yes, it was the, the Centennial Project. Yeah. And I, I believe there was a lot of discussion as to exactly mm -hmm. what the Centennial Project for where the city was going to be, yeah, yeah. but they did finally, mm -hmm. after many meetings and mm -hmm. discussions, decide that it was going to be a senior center. And I understand that um, the actual name, Century House, being you know picking up on the centennial theme, yeah. was found um, was suggested by Judge 
Tommy Fisher. Oh, yes. He, he suggested the name Sanctuary. I understand that. Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, good for him. He was quite yeah. involved. Uh, is there any interesting points that you uh, be able to recall or were told about the opening ceremony? Um, well, Jack's captured it fairly well in the book, um, but I, there's a couple of personal um, yeah. uh, stories that have been recounted to me. One would be uh, through Dunk Russell, who was involved uh, with at the ribbon cutting with Princess Margaret and um, and the lieutenant governor, John Perks. Lieutenant Perks. No, is it yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and there happens to be a picture of that in the front hallway commemorating that. Oh, yes, I see. And I um, know that they had the original front door and they had a, a ribbon strung across it mm -hmm. and the, the ribbons are, are still in the, um, mm -hmm. on display in the lobby. Mm -hmm. And Dunk said to me, because I knew him back in, in the days of working with, oh, yes. with him and Victoria, said, I don't, uh, every day I might come over here, Joy, now I don't want to, I want to see that picture in the foyer. I don't want to see myself put back on a dusty shelf somewhere. And there was a picture of he and wife, uh, his wife, Fran, and I got to know Fran quite well as, uh, as well. And so he was very clear with me that he wanted that picture to be made. I see. And I also remember that um, in uh, in the booklet, they talked about Princess Margaret wanting a glass of water, yes. and they hadn't planned on that, and how it caused quite a flurry for them to find this glass of water and get her her comfortable with the with the proceedings as they. She happened. asked for water, did yes. she? Yeah. Oh, because he said that they, they asked her if she wanted a drink, and I, yes. my reaction was, why in the world would they be serving <laughs> her a glass of water? I mean, you know, she probably looked a little stronger than that. <laughs> hmm. Um. So, uh, yeah, and I did hear about her overlooking the playground and making that comment yeah, about how yeah, lovely it was, yeah, location yeah. was. Yeah. I see. Uh, of course, this uh, century house didn't just uh, grow out of the dust. I guess there was a lot of foundation work. And I understand that uh, a number of people were involved. Uh, City Hall, of course, and then the Centennial Committee, as you referred to earlier. And uh, a couple of personalities or characters, whichever way you wish to describe them, uh, Dunk or Duncan Russell and Albert T. Thiessen. Mm -hmm. uh, would you care to comment on? Right. Um, well, Dunk Russell, I understand, was one of the members of the Parks and Recreation um, Commission at that time. And he was a little bit of a voice in the wilderness that was supporting the concept initially of the senior center, mm -hmm. but being a very um, persuasive kind of guy, mm -hmm. uh, I think he got people on board and was able to sell that concept mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. for what it is today. Um, the Recreation Commission was uh, a com um, initially a committee of council who uh, pushed that the idea of having a centennial project through and exactly what that was project was going to be they had to decide and they were charged with deciding i understand the location in the city of new westminster mm -hmm. um and that also i understand was a bit controversial but they did settle on moody park and al Thiessen, i understand was the parks and recreation Director. Um, at director uh, at that time, which yeah. would have been in charge of the Parks and Recreation Department. And he was a big supporter of this project. And mm -hmm. I think he and Dunk worked hard mm -hmm. to see it through. Well, that's interesting. Uh, you made reference to maybe disagreement as to uh, the uh, choosing the site of the house or the design of the house, not necessarily the design of what mm -hmm. I had that in mind, but People uh, didn't always agree that uh, it should be located where it is located now. That's right. I understand that um, they looked, um, there was a suggestion because the Pioneer Home was in Sapperton at that time and they, oh, yeah. they, they thought that perhaps down in that area the community would, because there was um, um, a residence for older or retired people that, that it might be better placed there. Mm -hmm. They looked at Clinton Place, which was um, just off Royal Avenue and Second, and um, on they also looked up here at um, Moody Park. And I understand that the um, 
this area wasn't as well developed at that time. Um, and there was some thought that it should be down closer to the more the center, which was near City Hall and so on. But uh, I, uh, they did they did in the end uh, yeah, choose Moody Park. They yeah. they came to an agreement on. But uh, I think it was a I would say a lengthy process, as in there was a a lot of discussion and people had some very strong ideas on um, mm -hmm. about the location. Mm -hmm and what it should be placed mm -hmm. close to. I guess they probably wanted to put it in a place too where it would be as cheap as, as possible. Do you have any idea how much this costs to put this together? Um, you're putting me on the spot there. Oh, well, I, don't, yeah. uh, that's, uh, that's not important, just a, just a matter of interest. Because yeah. you weren't here at the time. And the cost of the actual to... building was $40,000. $40,000. Back that, at that time, I right, understand. Yeah. And um, the finance yeah. committee or the city um, looked at uh, yeah. providing about half of yeah. that, yeah. and then through the centennial yeah. Yeah. operation, the other half. So, uh, weaving through a number of problems and agreements and disagreements, it eventually established itself. <laughs> well, yeah. It was really established. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the, the coordination of these people, the city uh, hall, centennial committee, and recreation commission. Uh, Dunk Russell and also Alfie. Sometimes the more people you get involved in decision making, the more difficult it is to make a decision. <laughs> um, and then I would imagine they would be interested in looking for somebody to uh, look after the place. Right. Um, did they have any idea of the kind of skills and the qualifications or understandings that would right. uh, the director would? Mm -hmm would have or should have? Well, I understand that um, prior to the center being built, yeah. they had looked at other mm -hmm. facilities and specifically one that stood out was the the house in Menlo Park, the little house, it was, it was called the little house in Menlo Park, in California. California. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, and in fact, I did recall seeing a picture of it and it did somewhat look like uh, Century House appeared when I first came here yeah. in 1980. Yeah. There was some definite um, yeah. similarities. So I think that also gave a bit of a footprint for mm -hmm. how they were planning mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. staff the facility and mm -hmm. operate it. And I believe that, that when the Commission had decided to uh, hire um, an officer, they thought it would first, first of all, that this person would be responsible for running summer programs um, in the park as well as administering Century House. And um, that they, the person that they were looking for then would have to have some programming experience and also be able to re relate well to older people. Um, it was advertised and I understand that Ruby McLeod uh, was a successful applicant, mm -hmm. and she was at that time the working as the program director at the YWCA mm -hmm. here in mm -hmm. Westminster. Mm -hmm. And um, apparently, she hadn't really thought about the job. But as this uh, Jack's uh, book says, um, Al Teeson contacted Dr. her Angel, and asked her if she would her, I should say. Yes, yes. yes. see if she would be interested yes. in considering yes. the, the challenge. I understand her first title was. Uh, uh, program supervisor. When was that changed? Was it changed to director? I believe it was changed to director exactly when I'm yes, not sure. Yes. yes. But, and that stayed for yes, a long yes. time. One of the, if you're referring to, to the book, one of the things I noticed, he said that in one case that the, the Recreation Commission would be in charge, would be responsible for the administration of this. Then he also mentioned that Ruby would be uh, an administrator, but it wasn't. Uh, uh, it was mostly looking for a program supervisor. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the impression. And they were they were the, like playing the, the the role of the recreation director by being the responsible for the administration at that time. Well, that's very interesting. And Ruby Ruby had a pretty good reputation, didn't she? Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And well, really 
well liked and well respected and loved by many of the members. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, there was a uh, an association developed, I believe, uh, of the uh, the members. Uh, and Jack Scott uh, refers to it as the Century House Association, and I'd be interested. I think the first president was a chap named Fred Becknell. Yeah, Becknell. Is it Becknell? Yes, I understand. Oh, yeah. oh excuse me, Becknell. Mm -hmm. B i c k n e l. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea how this association was developed? Did, was this instrumental through Ruby's work, or? I believe it was, and and you know, sort of refined along the way. But the idea being that the incorporating the members' interests and um, abilities, because of their interest, provided the obvious opportunity for people to volunteer their skills to lead the various activities yeah. and help determine the yeah. the direction of the center. And I would like to say that I, I believe that that is the success of this center mm -hmm. and um, provides a, a very positive uh, framework for which, uh, in which to operate. Mm -hmm. And it provides a, a framework, I believe, that makes it accountable and also allows the city mm -hmm. to work with with the community mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to best meet the needs of the mm -hmm. of the uh, mm -hmm. membership. And did all of the people who came to Century House were they automatically members of the association? If you yeah, if you joined the center, your membership fee um, meant that you were automatically a member of Century House mm -hmm. Association. Mm -hmm. And there was a fee for joining the center? There was, there was and is. Yeah, there, is, there was. I guess it was a nominal fee. I understand it yeah. was. And it has, um, well, even in the time that I've been here, yes, it has increased yeah. over the years. It's it's like a bookkeeping fee, if you like, to yeah. attract yeah. people yeah. and to ensure that there yeah. is a connection yeah. and yeah. an ability yeah. 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 to yeah. just communicate yeah. effectively yeah. with the members. Uh, were the, was the membership restricted to residents in yeah. Westminster, well, or were there those in the shopping areas able to join? People living across the street might live in Burnaby, right? right. So it'd be a controversial there. Mm -hmm. There was. Why can you um, go and I can't go? <laughs> that's right. Um, well, you ain't paying taxes. That's a direct answer. Um, probably. Uh, well, there there. Are, it evolved over the years, um, and I'm going to speak from some personal experience with the resident, non-resident fee. And at that time, I believe it was uh, $5.750, and that would be in the very early 80s. And the $5 for, was for New Westminster resident, and the $650 or $750 was for a non-resident. Mm -hmm. And as you know, the, the border for us between, for example, New Westminster and Burnaby is about... Uh, Two blocks away, yeah. and it really didn't um, serve yeah. us that yeah. well to yeah. Yeah. to um, differentiate between the residents. I mean, it it was it was respectful of New Westminster residency, but it certainly um, didn't create a, a cooperative uh, relationship with the residents. It happened to be two and a half blocks uh, to the north of us, so. Uh, there, there was a uh, uh, move by the association to disband the uh, resident, non-resident status. It was just a, an overall membership fee. And that, I suppose, started to be a bit controversial, but when looking at the practical application of the decision, it seemed pretty straightforward and, and it was changed. And, and now, I think it's... Um, it was a good decision at the time, and it served us well, and particularly within Burnaby, which has three or four senior centers that are similar to Century House. You have one membership for all of those locations. So now, if you're a res if you're a member of Century House, it's for New Westminster. If you're um, you live in Burnaby, or you have a membership for Burnaby Senior Center, it's for all of their centers, and so on. So it, it's more by community. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
Well, I guess the executive committee of the association, too, would have some worries sometimes trying to make these decisions. Or, mm -hmm. There's a lot of controversy, I would imagine, among the members themselves. Yes, yes. But um, a great way to to get at the hearts of the issues, you know, I think. Um, and again, in my time, while the, while, um, the association has struggled with things as controversial as the smoking and non-smoking within the center and um, and coming to an agreement that they felt they could live with wasn't one that the city said or staff imposed or an individual made they they you know had discussions they had meetings people had the opportunity input input and they helped to decide on on the, on the how it was going to be implemented or or if, if there was going to be a decision made about smoking or not smoking. Um, and that is the beauty of the association, that you they are a bellwether group. The executive is that we meet with monthly, uh, give you a good indication of, of where an issue lies, if it's controversial or not, or if it needs to be attended to or not. And also that they're, well, um, they're they're communicating one with one another. It's their friends. It's people they socialize with, and they have a good uh, sense of the lay of the land on what issues need to be dealt with or not. And uh, the association is just provides an invaluable resource yes, yes. in the operation. And like I say, we're wise enough to stay away from religion and politics. Yes, in the in their policies and procedures, yeah. um, there was um, a decision to to um, not become involved in any political, uh, with any political groups or parties or conversations mm -hmm. with candidates, mm -hmm. and also not to have religious um, occasions or um, yeah. services or whatever mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. activities happen within the center. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that was also wise well beyond its years because it's held us in good stead and given a good framework yeah. Yeah. for making decisions. Yeah. Yeah. So, Ruby was uh, in the beginning of all this, and uh, I understand she was very highly thought of and regarded. Uh, would you like to comment on that? Yes, yes. Um, I arrived here in 1980, and Ruby, I believe, retired in 1975, right? Um, and I certainly heard lots about her and was um, told about Ruby would do this and Ruby would do that. Mm -hmm. um, she had moved to Surrey, so um, was no, not um, sort of close by, but um, cer certainly I heard just what a wonderful job she did, how much, and I can say was loved by the members mm -hmm. and they felt that she listened to their needs and worked closely with them to mm -hmm. ensure that their mm -hmm. their programs and activities were, were that they wanted were offered and so on. And as well, um, I can speak to now knowing Ruby personally because she's moved back into the neighborhood and in fact lives across the street. Mm -hmm. And Ruby is a member of Century House and mm -hmm. um, still when I watch her uh, connecting with her, now her friends here, and some of the long, old-time members that would have even perhaps, I have to be careful because maybe they're not around now, but I think there's one or two still. Mm -hmm. um, you can just see mm -hmm. just the way she is with mm -hmm. people, and she's a very warm and friendly she's person. She's a good person. She's a person saying That's right. And, um, and she mm -hmm. still loves this place. Mm -hmm. You know, she... Uh, I think well, after 17 years and having a good experience for 17 years, yeah. she knew when to quit and uh, she left with a good taste in her mouth. That's right, and yeah. a, a legacy for for the members and the center, and yeah. also then yeah. um, to in, to think enough of it to come back again mm -hmm. and enjoy mm -hmm. it then mm -hmm. on a more personal basis. Mm -hmm. What would you say would be some of the major developments that took place during her tenure? Well, I, there were many because there wasn't a footprint really to follow of senior centers. The Century House was, you know, one mm -hmm. of the first of its kind. So mm -hmm. she um, had to work to 
with with the members to to find out their interests, needs, and wants as far as programs and activities went. So I believe that was um, a real strength, an organizational strength that she has left within the center. And um, the physical space um, during her time was added on to a number of, on a number of occasions, and she worked with the members to raise actively raise the funds to mm -hmm. support mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. additions. And with those additions came some major expansion of programs. And mm -hmm. carpet bowling today is not a flourishing activity. It's it's we probably have you know two or three carpets, um, three mornings a week. While in Ruby's um, time, I understand they'd have as many as eight carpets, mm -hmm. and they would have it five mornings a week. That mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, she worked with the groups that developing the bus trips and, and mm -hmm. those out, um, mm -hmm. out trips kinds of activities. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I believe just finding or setting a place in New Westminster, um, setting a quality um, mm -hmm. and level of service for older residents um, to access and enjoy, but also the respect of um, of a community that appreciates their the older residents mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and, and well, that's very important. Yeah, it's, it's very important. So she set a tone, uh, I believe, mm -hmm. in the community and and uh, that has continued on. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not I'm not saying Ruby was solely responsible, but I think by the way she operated a center like Century House, it was a focal point for seniors in the community mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. It is today. Mm -hmm. And the way that she chose to operate, and mm -hmm. and the evolution of that operation under her direction, mm -hmm. um, has, is the cornerstone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the way it operates today. Well, that's very interesting. Good news. Mm -hmm. So she retired in 1975, and uh, then there were two people who came in later on. They said Barbara Boris and. Sheila Landerman, mm -hmm. and I wonder if uh, just one by one, starting with Barbara first, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, could you give me some idea of uh, their adjustment? Well, not necessarily yeah. adjustment, it's a horrible adjustment, I guess, coming in yes. after that, but what would be well, some I of the things that, uh, yeah. they say. that Barbara did? Well, I have the, again, I also had the opportunity to meet Barbara um, a couple of different times and also when we had our 30th uh, reunion, they were, or 25th reunion, they both she and Sheila came back. But Barbara um, had huge shoes to fill and I think that's the only way we could say that. She was working down at Centennial Community Center uh, as a community programmer and um, I believe that Ruby supported Barb's um, um, appointment to this position, to the position of director of Century House. But also, and because she had gotten to know Barbara over the, the years within the department. But Barbara also um, realized just how, um, well, what a great, what a wonderful job Ruby had done, and they were they were just big shoes mm -hmm. to fill, and it's very difficult. And Barbara was much younger, um, you know, in her twenties, and and a graduate of recreation. However, um, probably because it sounds still looking, you know, at her career path, because in the end she was here for a couple of years, and and went on to become a um, took in the police, police training police department, yeah. and and so on. So. Um, she had a short tenure, and I think it was difficult. There was she faced a lot of challenges, um, just because the the members were had been used to one style Sorry. of administration and, and support, yeah. and Barbara's was somewhat different. I understand, but it was and and uh, not um, not worse or better, but just different. And that well, was the thing is too her. that I can imagine that she came in without any supervision. You know, there wasn't a director here then. She was a programmer, and she came in and changed the, the place. And yeah. So she was at that level. It was a promotion for her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, she, she, her background in administration was very limited, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. that would be, uh, I guess, the, she was. Um, 
they thought maybe with her program skills she could handle, also handle the administration. That's not always the case. There's, there are different skills and levels of maturity required, and uh, uh, she, they mention in the book that um, she uh, revived a couple of things, such as a fitness program, mm -hmm. and she tried to uh, develop, according to the book, some what they refer to as a creative approach to fitness, fitness rather than the standard O'Grady well, says it. type of thing. Right. Uh, and she, what, what is the clarion? She, the, the newsletter. We rise the clarion. Right. The clarion is the monthly newsletter. Oh, yes, I see. Right. Oh, yeah. And I think I saw a copy. Yes, that's a, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And what is this uh, uh, game that she, uh, they refer to it? Is it Euchre? Euchre? Euchre, is that? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm and I'm not sure how to play it myself. I've played it once or twice, but it's a, it tend to be an Easterner's game. Um, but there was a, um, a Euchre. There were people that were interested in playing some Euchre, and she mm -hmm. got that going um, mm -hmm. while she was here. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it was, it was going when I arrived here uh, for a few years, and then the interest waned and, and mm -hmm. it, um, mm -hmm. it was ceased. But um, mm -hmm. yes, I understood she got the, the Euchre mm -hmm. going. Do you know uh, what administrative responsibilities was she expected to execute? Are you familiar with that? No, I'm, no, I'm sorry, no, I can't really. No, 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 no. He states in the book that she started or regenerated these birthday parties. He mentions in 1977. And that didn't surprise me because uh, I knew her as a quite a creative person mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it wasn't just as you know she, she didn't have a standard approach she was a unique type of person in that respect well she stayed there until 1978 or 77 I believe right and then uh, in 1978 uh, there was uh, the, the other uh, uh, Sheila Landrigan. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me anything about Sheila Landrigan? Yes, and because I had the opportunity to work with Sheila while I was in Oak Bay, and mm -hmm. um, she was the um, one of the community or community coordinators mm -hmm. um, at Henderson Park mm -hmm. Recreation mm -hmm. Center in Oak Bay, and she um, was a, applied for and was successful in mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. application for the director's job here at Century House. And she came here in 1978. Mm -hmm. And she, I believe, also had experienced some of the same struggles that Barbara had because still, in the two years, Barbara had made um, strides and, um, and, and made some changes, but was still with some opposition to the people that were used to. Oh, yes. They, they were, this isn't the way we all was good at type of thing. That's exactly it right. To the, to right. the best of us, really. Right. I think we've all experienced that. To certain yes. Extent. Yeah, myself yes. included. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I believe um, um, Barbara and uh, and Sheila had covered, uh, were, had attended university at times together. Uh, I understand. I'm not sure if they were exactly the same year, but they do, did know one another previously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, she arrived, as I said, she arrived here in, in 1978. Mm. And she worked as well on the Keep Fit exercise programs and developed it into what they called fitness and fun. Yes. Yeah. And um, the idea with that was, I believe, to add a social component to mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. fitness mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. And they were um, a, a couple of times a week. And mm -hmm. as well, then they did some out uh, or some excursions so mm -hmm. they might go mm -hmm. for walks mm -hmm. once a month mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or they went mm -hmm. on um, you know went on the buses somewhere together as a social mm -hmm. outing as um, and mm -hmm. it was as a result of their initial participation in fun and fitness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, she also got um, bridge lessons going mm -hmm. and she also worked on the billiard room now I understand that that was added on to, and there was um, access to the billiard room. It seemed to be more for the men, and Sheila worked hard to 
have uh, women involved. Yeah, I saw a couple of women playing down the yeah. 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 But it was kind of a traditional yeah, know, men's activity. Yeah, yeah. And I know, and Sheila herself would enjoy yeah. billiards, yeah. so yeah. she yeah. she uh, worked hard on that one. Mm -hmm. And also some ceramics and pottery mm -hmm. classes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she I, she had a, a, a very good outlook in that she the opportunity was provided and some you know stuck and were successful and others they were they went for a, a session or two and then due to lack of interest or whatever petered out but that was not to be deterred that you know the opportunity had been provided and there were mm -hmm. people that were well Depends served. Depends the people too. And it takes a while yeah, to make yeah, that shift. Yeah. yeah. The thing that uh, amazes me when I when I read this, mm -hmm. that he's replacing a person who retired. And hey, these people were in their young, their early twenties, and the people they're working with are not twenty-year-olds or teenagers, but they're working with people who've already retired. Mm -hmm. So they in itself, they uh, you know, it's a, a different thing to relate to when you're we're dealing with people, particularly, and to expect. Uh, Anyway, uh, but I think that's really critical yes. because that also changed Century House because the, um, and, and you know, if you'd asked me when I went, when I came here and I was 26 or 7, um, I would have said I was quite able to understand the needs of older people and I was mature enough and so on. And that's just not the case. I mean, mm -hmm. you think because mm -hmm. that's your, your yeah, framework yeah, of yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah. And I believe that that has, um, mm -hmm. it brings some mm -hmm. life and differences to the center, but it must be very hard on the people that have been used to it, as you say, a certain oh, yes, way. Yes, yes, that's yes, worked very yes, well, yes, thank yes, you very yes. much. I, I've had the experience in my working life where I replaced someone uh, who's successor, uh, the, the, the majority of the people involved expected somebody else. Oh, yes. You see, and, uh, and, and to say, it, anyway, uh, it creates problems. The one of the things mentioned was mixed media, that she contributed to mixed media. Do you know anything about that? I believe that was the um, art, the, the painting classes. So yeah. rather than just having, yeah. say, a watercolor yeah. class, yeah. Um, uh, they were into gouache, they were into yeah, oil yeah, painting, yeah, yeah. and that kind of thing. Yeah. So it's interesting, see, everything that, that's reported on these two people is, deals 100% with program. There's no mention to their recruiting skills, their in-service training skills, uh, because uh, they weren't operating at that level, you know? And uh, it, it's a shame in a way, because they're expected to do something that they didn't have uh, a background for. You. Anyway, that's part of the experience. We, you know, a, 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 a march of a thousand miles has to start with a single step. Type that's of thing. right. Uh, I have a, another question that uh, is related to this. And Jack Scott, in his book, refers to a person named Kay Barker mm -hmm. becoming caretaker in 1977, and that's uh, the year before. Uh, Sheila took over, and there's a sandwich in between uh, Barbara and what do you think about a caretaker? Um, when Century House went through one of its um, one of the expansions, which was the addition of Moody Park Recreation Center, there was um, a park washroom and uh, field change rooms for teams and so on and as well um, things that were going on out on the soccer pitches and the baseball fields and lights were in the park and that kind of thing. And so there was a need to have a resident caretaker. And Kay Barker was not the first, and I can't recall the people that... A uh, caretaker, what did you do? So they, no, they lived here at, on the premises and they were responsible for caretaker for Moody Park, which also included Century House. And they were, as well as being on the premises as a resident caretaker, were hired to do some uh, what we call BSW, building service work or janitorial. But what, kinds of I don't quite get this, the meaning of the word caretaker. 
Well, she would have been responsible, for example, to make sure the lights were on in the park oh, for the fall I see. Seat. So they didn't have any, there's no program in for the professional, there's no, nothing expected of her in terms of professional no. productivity. No, no, I she see. would be like yeah. an apartment manager. I see. Uh, uh, so she and would, why did they, uh, could they find somebody to Well, I, I'm not sure, but certainly in New Westminster, and it remains so today, that uh, three of our parks have resident caretakers. And what that responds to is the needs that come up from park users that happen, quote, outside of um, regular business hours, sort of about before 8.30 in the morning and after but this 9 o'clock uh, at night. But this is Sanctuary House. I mean, I don't understand, understand why it well, Sanctuary House is located in Moody Park. And there's ball teams that were out using the fields. But they they they're going to dispense with the with this program and a director, a minister. No, no, she was a, a, a she was not in in place of any of the Century House staff. She was just another. So they didn't have anybody there. Yes, they did. Yeah, that well, was. Well, Barbara true. was gone, and uh, and uh, what's her name, Sheila? Excuse me, Sheila was gone. Mm. And she came in after Sheila, and between okay. Sheila and you. So I was just wondering, um, there was I nobody was here as staff person. Well, um, I can't. I'm not sure, but it's it, um, in Jack's um, book. I think he said caretaker in February '77, and that would have been when Barbara was here. Is that true? I believe she and Barbara overlapped and she lived on the premises. She had nothing to do with the operation of Century House office per se. Or, well, I think you know. Barbara was the first, if I, if I understand this, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Uh, uh, Barbara was from 75 to 77 mm -hmm. and she was from 78 to 80. Yeah, but that could have been just, um, I'm not sure what months or whatever. I see, but, okay, all right. But fine, yes, yeah, okay. okay. And there have been subsequent caretakers, yeah. and we have caretakers today. Yes. Yeah. But they didn't, Kay wasn't directly involved with the operation of Century House. No, they? no. So when you, when you took over in, in 1980, who did you replace? Sheila. Sheila. She was still here when you came on. She hired, I came I on as the recreation programmer. Yes. I was the first programmer yes. in the center. Yes. And that was in April. And she uh, applied for and was successful for a promotion within our department. Excuse me, just one, you say you were the first programmer well, in the center. Are we talking about Irving House? Uh, Century House or the, or the Recreation Center now? Century House. But these other people were programmers. That's what confuses me. Well, it was an additional staff person. It be, became aware of just what you touched yeah. on earlier, Dick, with the administrative. Yeah. Um, responsibilities, yeah. the growth of the center, yeah. Yeah. and the... Well, to whom were you responsible? I reported to Century of Supervisor, which was Sheila. Oh, well, you reported to Sheila? Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. And then... Oh, pardon me for being no, a little vague on this, because no. it's just a little, yeah. little different. Yeah. Uh, I understand that since uh, 1960, Century House has been located within the administrative framework of the Parks and Recreation Department, and you say you were responsible to uh, Sheila, who was was she was her title director or administrator? Or what was Century House director. She was doing Century House director, um, and uh, now you. Uh, uh, you, 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 at present time, you attend regular Parks and Recreation Department de 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 right. departmental meetings, is that what right. you um, When, as a programmer, I... Um, oh, with all that noise, perhaps we could uh, resume then. When did your, uh, as uh, the, you became director after Sheila left, uh, when did your title change to that of manager? In uh, about four years ago, the department, um, the department, and it wasn't a reorganization per se, it was just a renaming so that there was some consistency. 
and what had happened was the term director had been, as you may be aware from in the field, this director is used in a lot of, at a lot of levels. Mm -hmm. And what they felt was that manager was more descriptive of the duties of a, of a facility based person. And mm -hmm. so, uh, we were, are actually managers of recreation facilities. And, uh, now the department heads are, is a, Parks and Recreation Director, mm -hmm. formerly known as a Parks and Recreation Administrator. Mm -hmm. Now it's Director, mm -hmm. and there's an Assistant Parks and Recreation Department, uh, Parks and Recreation Director, mm -hmm. and you will find that in all of the city departments, and then so much so, I think a good example is uh, we used to know them as the City Treasurer or the mm -hmm. Deputy mm -hmm. and the Deputy Treasurer. Mm -hmm. They are now the Director. Um, mm -hmm the director of uh, financial services mm -hmm. and the assistant director of financial mm -hmm. services, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it was just a general um, mm -hmm. um, renaming mm -hmm. and some organizational mm -hmm. structural change, I suppose, mm -hmm. but of our department. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if, uh, what sort of changes is the, the manager that you bring to the situation? Um, Just very briefly. Don't, right. Don't. Right. Um, I, th I think it's uh, also an evolution of the center. Um, certainly a much um, greater responsibility for staff development, mm -hmm. um, a much higher uh, level of accountability for the facility maintenance and the physical structure of mm -hmm. the plant. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would also say the um, evolution of um, computers and the technology mm -hmm. for doing business on mm -hmm. behalf of the city, mm -hmm. whether it's registration and sort of accounting mm -hmm. items or uh, what methods of communication and so on. What would you consider to be some of the biggest challenges you've had to face during your tenure? Um, initially, I think working with the membership because I, like my predecessors, Barbara and Sheila, was a younger person and nowhere near as experienced. So I would say understanding um, the process of working with an association and an advisory board and, and gaining their confidence mm -hmm. and um, and also the ability to communicate effectively um, without, and so that people's needs were, were met. Mm -hmm. So I would say that was the first one. The second one then came with the evolution of um, programs. Um, we were very good with, uh, with uh, organized drop-in activities, so mm -hmm. the card games and the bingos and the trips mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and so on. Um, but in my view, we were um, weak in the area of instructional programs and opportunities mm -hmm. and finding a way or working with the staff to mm -hmm. find ways of providing those instructional mm -hmm. programs mm -hmm. and opportunities. Um, so that was the secondary. Um, mm -hmm. Probably the third thing was the um, implement or evolution of the food services program, getting a mm -hmm. uh, kitchen. Um, uh, built on site and then seeing that program through and managing that to um, the level that it is today and it still um, still requires work but that that's been a, um, a, a big step or a big change uh, and then the next one obviously comes with the uh, renovation of the center which was the, the latest renovation in 19 um, we called it Expand 88. It was actually completed by 1991. And working through that process, working with the fundraising of that and the members um, committee to ensure that what they wanted in the way of design was um, considered in the overall plans and ensuring that, that um, they were aware of what was happening and also then working with the contractors and the other city staff to ensure that Mm -hmm. that what we thought was going to happen was going to mm -hmm. actually come to yeah, fruition. Yeah. And then I would say the final thing um, is just the overall 
um, development of s support services for mm -hmm. members. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that would be things from emotional support, such as development of the peer counseling program uh, yes. and vital connections, um, which has also included our partnering with, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. the health regions mm -hmm. um, in putting that, those services mm -hmm. together. And um, supporting the uh, development and initiation mm -hmm. of, of um, support groups, I should use that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So we now have uh, an Alzheimer's support group that regularly meets here. There's an osteoporosis outreach program. There's a Parkinson's support group. Mm -hmm. There's an arthritis self-management program. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. kinds of, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of, of supports. Very good. So, and then with this other piece of the service pie is the things like legal advice, uh, uh, access to those kinds of, um, that that kind of information, um, assistance with income tax returns, kind of the general day-to-day -day mm -hmm. issues that older people might feel less than confident in taking on, but when provided in mm -hmm. kind of their space, mm -hmm. they have easy access to, mm -hmm. and hopefully is put, makes it um, senior friendly, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It's, it's there, yeah. it's there for them, they may not need it today, they yeah. might want it two years yeah. from now, yeah. or, or it might be for a friend, but they know it's here. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, that's, that's excellent. I think the, the people of the U.S. Mister, for receiving these kind of services are exceptionally fortunate, um, because that's a very broad perspective. It isn't just that it's a long way from carpet bowling. Yeah, but, it, and that in itself is important. I'm not very important. Thing, but I would yeah. say these kinds of services, you might say, are a little more sophisticated level. Not that they're any more important, but uh, if, uh, I think a person who's not familiar with this, mm -hmm. hearing the kinds of things we're just saying, would be totally surprised, surprised you know, right. happily surprised too. It, that I think that goes um, along with the idea that. Um, the senior center initially probably started as a social recreation center and but what happens is when people are coming and you're having a, a social interaction it starts to go beyond well you know I got you know I had uh, 100 you know honors in bridge today or yeah, I, yes. I made a grand slam yes and then oh I could the next comment could be, well, I could have made that grand slam, but boy, am I having problems with my memory. Or, you know, I've just come out of hospital. And you get to know people at a different level. And what becomes obvious is that you don't deal with a person as a carpet bowler or no, a bridge no. player. Yeah. You tend to deal with them as Dick Ramsey or as a person. Joe Blow. With the feelings, person. the emotions, and That's the right. responses. That's excellent. And so out of that, then you start to understand more what their personal needs might be, the challenges that they face, and the ways that a senior center can support or offer assistance or guidance mm -hmm. in that regard. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way that people, once they find access to the services, are appreciative, it's helpful, it's supportive and yet it's respectful mm -hmm. of what the person is, mm -hmm. is doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, and there certainly are, in addition to that, a multitude of activities themselves. I want to expect you to list all these activities mm -hmm. because the, 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 there's really a, a multitude of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but would it be fair to ask you, what, what, what seem to be, say, the, the three or four uh, activities that seem to be more... Uh, yeah. Um, and maybe you could talk about the Clarion. Be, this, yeah. this, this the Clarion month. is the monthly newsletter, and it, it yes. gives the overview of what's yes. on for the month yes. and what to expect, what's yes. coming up in the following month. Yes. Um, if I'm sure you uh, people would have an understanding of the general things that would happen in a senior center, but over and above the opportunities or activities that I think are of, of extra special interest would be things like the so slow pitch softball game. Oh, yeah. You know, there is a competitive and a recreational yes, team. Yes, yes. And they play in a yes, lower mainland yes. league. Yes. And um, 
Yeah. I like to think that Century House played a role in starting that a programmer here. Oh, yeah. The initial stages with me was Robin McGinnis, and um, she uh, was an interested, you know, an avid slow pitch player, and we started having it. We had an invitational tournament. No one had played. It was just for fun, and three or four centers came one day in July many years ago, and, and we had a tournament. And it was very low key. It was a lot of fun, and more gag prizes and things like that. But it has evolved now, where there is a, a league in the Lower Mainland of ten centers, and there's also um, slow pitch in the senior games, the BC senior games. So I, I think that's an interesting point. We have a very active hiking group and a very active walking group, and um, there's another group that goes to the theater for theater outings uh, mm -hmm. that they they um, um, gather together. We have um, month, well, I would not monthly exactly, but bi-monthly sessions called um, Insights on, into Emotional Well-Being. And we work through our Vital Connections program and the local um, mental health center. And the two social workers involved with that program work with um, the members of Century House and uh, and a um, what's the term is there kind of a focus group of individuals that look at topics of interest to older people, and then that information is provided back in the way of an educational seminar, where people can come together and and hear say what what are the um, pieces of an emotional emotionally healthy toolkit, you know. Um, they talk about the challenges of aging, the challenges of life, living on your own, your independence, and that kind of thing. Um, and then it goes into um, great evening activities, which are like a night out in the town. So they're, they're ethnic evenings or um, um, special events, talent shows. Um, and we've done even intergenerational talent shows with the high school students. Um, and that's a whole other area in working with the youth in the community. There's a um, variety of opportunities for that our members volunteer to assist with, either um, for fun or for actually supporting the youth, and that is with the elementary school students through their student conference days. They, our members will provide, um, volunteer to provide um, a craft or instruction on how to play old table games or whatever mm -hmm. for those students. Um, they work closely with the family management class at the high school mm -hmm. and meet with them, um, those students, uh, to to assist them with their course material. And really what the students are interested in hearing from, from the seniors is their life experiences and the things that they have gone through and the challenges that they've faced. Um, and then we work closely with a number of other community organizations as well. So the police service is regularly in providing um, safety seminars. The um, fire department is coming in, in fact, next month to do uh, um, how to plan your escape. So people, we have a predominantly um, apartment living population. And so if you live on the 10th floor, what's it going to entail for your, you know, you getting mm -hmm. out in the event yeah. of an emergency? Yeah. So those kinds of things. So I think, you know, you think of the middle of the world cards and games and social activities, but it's rounded out into other aspects. Well, they all play their role in contributing to the happiness and the health of the individual. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. You know, I was going to ask you what, you, what the, some of the things you enjoyed most of it. I think you've kind of answered that question, because mm -hmm. I get the impression that just whatever you do is an enjoyable experience for you. Generally, it is. And it. I can tell by the expression on your face and your enthusiasm, <laughs> the way in which you, way in which you talk about it. I, I apologize for spending so much time on the, on the history of this, but the, 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 this is supposed to be an oral history, you right, see. Right. And so we need some historical <laughs> background. And you supplied that very well. And you've also uh, uh, showed a, a tremendous amount of enthusiasm about what you're doing now. And I might say that it's, it's a certainly a very comprehensive undertaking. Um, I was going to ask you uh, something about your experiences, uh, your, your college experiences and so on. Maybe we could, unless you want, if you want to talk about that, that's fine, uh, but uh, you might want to talk more about uh, what your, what your, the way you think this place is going, what it's going to look like in the future, or 
intuitions, whatever oh, you wish okay. to do. Um, well, I, I cer yeah, certainly it would be interesting to comment on educational background. Yeah. Because I think my overall comment was would be that nothing could ever prepare you. I don't, I don't know exactly if there's one course that would actually no. prepare no. a person to take on the kind of responsibilities no. that we face. Not that they're, not that they're um, overly demanding, but I think they're very diversified. Mm -hmm. And and depending on our knowledge and so on, then the demand obviously goes mm -hmm. up, or the the stress or the involvement or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that um, certainly when I went through college, um, I you won't remember this, Dick, but I remember coming to UBC and actually having a, a brief conversation with you back in probably the summer of '72 when I was looking at at uh, where I was going to go to school and from a small place. Well, that's like, when you grew to hate UBC, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you, for a girl that grew up in Summerland, that I think when I left there was 4,000 people. To come to Vancouver, which yeah. I hadn't spent a lot of time um, anyway, was overwhelming. And then to see a campus that was uh, two or three times the size of my hometown was overwhelming. It was too much. Yeah. Um, so anyway, one thing led to another. I also looked at BCC and then settled on Caribou College, and that was closer to my hometown yes. and, and worked for me. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly it was an adequate program, but mm -hmm. again, in two years, um, to learn all of the things that, that uh, a person needs to know. I think it, it's a good taster, it's a good uh, living, learning experience, and if sure you're on the job, um, you know, uh, it, it sets the foundation and then you, you move on from there. So, um, well, if it, even if it sets mm -hmm. the foundation, that's very good because it's very important that you learn how to mm -hmm. think and rid yourself of prejudice have an open mind yep. and uh, be able to accept people as they are. And that's a real learning experience too. Sure because it is. The, we, um, and again, it's the, the, more, the more we begin to know, the more we realize we don't know. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, over the years, it's been tremendous learning experience for me and what I've gathered and learned through my work experience has been tremendous. And um, I've appreciated the many opportunities and the many paths that that I've been able to go down mm -hmm. as part of that learning. Um, so, so yeah, I'm, sometimes I thought, you know, maybe a social work background would have been more appropriate, and then I think well, perhaps I should have gone on a much further and, and looked at a master's level of education and recreation. I'm not sure, but certainly what I've learned over the years mm -hmm. on the job and the experiences mm -hmm. I've had, um, I think have held me in good stead, and mm -hmm. and I feel relatively confident mm -hmm. with the work that we're doing here. Mm -hmm. um, but again, mine is an Alex experience because I haven't gone beyond Westminster now. Mm -hmm. I've been here for quite a period of time. But I get the impression, and don't mind me saying so, that you are a very receptive kind of person. I and hope that, so. uh, Yes, you are, yeah. and uh, you articulate your feelings very well indeed, in my humble opinion. And uh, I'm sure that. Uh, Success and just about any, any domain is going to be yours in the future. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Because I like your attitude. Yeah, thank you. Well, it's, but people here have helped me form that too. Yes, because of course. you come up with such a variety yes. of individuals. And for Century House in the future, um, I believe that, um, and this would be contrary to some generally held beliefs, I, I think that there is a role for senior centers in the community. Um, and that it's senior centers, uh, by virtue of what you think them to be or people perceive them to be, can be a good place or a, or a negative place where only older people go and it's not mm -hmm. fun or mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. exciting or stimulating. Mm -hmm. So I think that's our job to ensure that. It is exciting and stimulating. Exactly. Yeah. And it's You're the an kind enabler. of place that people look forward to being yes. part of and participating in. Yes. And having said that, I also believe that there is um, the whole area of continuing to expand the community partnerships so that it's not solely a recreation center, that it is a kind of a, a service and recreation center for older people that's a focal point for people in the community mm -hmm. and where services are available as well as recreation programs and opportunities. 
And I also believe that part of that will be an emphasis on the whole fitness aspect and that, that um, the opportunities for exercise and weight rooms and that kind of, of um, activity that is in a senior center designated for older people um, is I know, something that we're, we would like to work on and it does happen in other senior centers. But I, I do believe that that's an important um, area mm -hmm. and growth area mm -hmm. because as we age, we start to realize the importance of that. Um, mm -hmm. And the other, the other piece of work that we are into at the moment for Century House is the whole area of mental fitness and the mental fitness program that we're working with. And we've done some partnering with the Simon Fraser Gerontology mm -hmm. Research Center mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. Um, are looking forward to presenting the facts of uh, or the findings of of the work that we've done in this area at the mm -hmm. upcoming um, World Congress on Aging that's mm -hmm. going to be held here in, in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And essentially the, our experience and the research supports the idea that when people are stimulated mentally um, in conjunction with um, you know physical well-being and spiritual well-being that the mental capacities and the mental abilities of older people when stimulated contribute to a healthy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. aging mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. and um, it's exciting it's mm -hmm. very exciting and it's very interesting and to watch the people that started at the outset of this work in the early um, near the mid 80s and are still working on it and still involved with the program the volumes to the importance of, of mental stimulation and keeping people mentally fit as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. as the, when they pass an aging. Do you have a library here? Not much of one, but we have we have a very good public library within yes, a block. Yes, yes, yes. And um, they yes, are, they are yes, excellent. Yes. Yeah. I uh, excuse me. I, I found that. Uh, a number of elderly people, and I guess I'm including myself in that category now because I'm quite an old man, really, uh, uh, have a, a desire to live, you know? Yes, exactly. uh, but they also have to be uh, realized that there's an opportunity for them to live, yeah. you know? Uh, and that uh, whether it's a uh, carpet bowl, you might say, or sitting down and, and reading and then having a, 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 a discussion over the books they're reading is, is and talking about mental stimulation mm -hmm. is uh, is very important mm -hmm. uh, I've uh, do you have any firm ideas as where this place might be going what does it look like five years from now um I'm hoping, well, we've worked with the lifelong, we have a lifelong learning committee. Yes. And they're an advisory group of people that initially uh, focus mainly on this mental fitness project that we've been working on over the last number of years. But more recently, because we're, we're finding, it, we're going to be wrapping up that piece of research and, and work. Um, that they are advising fairly closely on the kinds of activities or opportunities that they would like to see provided in the area of lifelong learning. And you mentioned about the, the discussion following the book. Well, one of the, um, one of the activities that's been spawned from that is, is a book club. Yes. And they do exactly as, as you're speaking. They identify a novel or a, a book that they would like to read for mm -hmm. that month. Mm -hmm. They put it out in the clearing and then the following month they gather together and discuss the, mm -hmm. you know, their interpretations mm -hmm. and so on. So um, I believe that, uh, and another one was called, now it's called the chat room, but it's a discussion group and there was a retired um, prof that comes to Century House who has a real interest uh, in um, sort of community affairs and, mm -hmm. and um, sort of the, so the, the social direction. Mm -hmm. And he has offered to provide, uh, facilitate a mm -hmm. 
twice monthly discussion groups, and we've called that the chat room. Very and good. So that kind of opportunity. So they're, they're perhaps they're not um, a directed learning environment, but they're kind of a, a peer supported or common interest yes, kind yes, of learning. Yes. And to me, that um, that's a more, um, it, I wouldn't say manageable, but it makes more sense because it finds its own way and it and it is based on the interests of the participants. Yes. And then if there's specific right. areas right. of interest or some um, p specific piece of information they would like more information mm -hmm. on and would like, quote, the staff to hire mm -hmm. a, an instructor or a, a res uh, resource mm -hmm. person to come mm -hmm. in and share that information, mm -hmm. then that could happen. But it becomes a little bit more self-directed. Mm -hmm. and, um, and for uh, other senior centers, have more of that happening perhaps than we do here at Century House but it's been a it's an evolution again mm -hmm. and um, we still have very strong um, interest and support and uh, participation in our social recreation programs mm -hmm. but this educational or um, mental Yes, mentally stimulating kinds of programs. Well, you can't divide them in a little category. The social all, program has mental implications and social implications. It does. It does. Uh, I think that uh, you mentioned in the chat that you'd like to volunteer to uh, conduct a discussion group and so yes. on. I think that if people want to be identified with this organization, that means you're doing a good job. And if they want to volunteer their services, yes. That means you're doing an exceptionally fine job. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, uh, they wouldn't, you know, right. want anything to do with it. And uh, we, you know, we didn't touch on the volunteer component, but volunteers are the backbone. Yes. And we, yes. We depend right on volunteers, and they carry mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. a wide variety mm -hmm. and consistently mm -hmm. provide the the work and the and the framework that mm -hmm. the activities happen mm -hmm. within the center whether it's answering the telephone yeah. or making sick visits yeah. or phone calls yeah. or serving a lunch in the yeah. kitchen, yeah. you know, or leading the big Yes, group. of course. Uh, you know, this is, uh, I was going to mention this later on, or I should mm -hmm. be uh, immediately, because I know the time's running away from us, but the thought came to my mind when I first met you and introduced to this organization that they will come when you would require an assistant Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, not only uh, a program supervisor, but maybe an assistant supervisor, but also uh, the significance of uh, realizing the importance of volunteers. And you do that now, don't you? Very much so. Yes. Um, and um, Sort of, and I like what you said about the assistant. Um, either, either were there assistant or there are assistant. I mm -hmm. suppose as, as the staffing component. Yeah. That um, if people are interested in taking it on, um, to whatever degree that they're willing to take on the responsibility, um, it's our, I see it as our role to remove the barriers so that they can successfully carry on their activities or to do the dirty work if that's what's required, or to um, work behind the scenes mm -hmm. to provide the framework for them to mm -hmm. have, have that success. Mm -hmm. And I would use that in the way that we have uh, worked recently with uh, a committee that does the bursary for the high, sc uh, high school students. Mm -hmm. So one of the legacy Century House uh, members identified during the International Year of Older Persons, which was not UN, uh, dedication was 1999, and they looked at a variety of things and we had a, a number of activities over that year in, cel in that celebration. Mm -hmm. One of the ones was to provide a bursary to a deserving student um, at the local high school. Mm -hmm. And there is a group of people that have taken that on. And we as staff work with them, but essentially um, they decide how they want to raise the funds to support the bursary fund. They make the selection of the students. So we might contact the school, get the names and numbers for them 
to phone or, or if they want to have like a services option to raise the money to work with them to put the special event together. But they will decide what that special event is going to look like and will also be the ones that are on hand at the graduation exercises sure. to provide the bursary and that kind of thing. And um, tremendous, I mean, that's kind of a volunteer um, job that has tremendous spin-offs mm -hmm. in a variety of ways. Um, and then I think within our association that um, when they choose to go on uh, to do either activities or run meetings or or start new programs or services that we work with them in whatever way they require us so that they can um, have their goals met and and that can be from starting the chat room or the book club to um, to getting a convection oven installed in the kitchen so that the baking can, you know we can do more right. baking on this on the spot sure well that's excellent uh, is there anything you would want to cover that we haven't covered or something I've left out or something that you're just dying to tell me besides I think yeah. I've got to get out of here now and look at it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't think so. Um, I would like to just point out that it's, um, you know, as the manager of a centre, I get the opportunity to speak about the programs and activities that we um, that are available here, but behind the scenes, you know, there's, uh, we have a, a staff uh, for two other uh, program people. Two program people, yes. Right. Um, and we have a, a building service worker who who is the, mm -hmm. quote, the janitor, takes on the janitorial duties, mm -hmm. but I mean, you know, it's a very pleasant atmosphere mm -hmm. to come to and, and, and be part of. We have a tremendous, uh, uh, person in the kitchen who does the food services coordination and, and she also has a helper and then um, um, we have all of the instructors and so on that provide the programs and so you know we're a team that's that's working together to provide these services and opportunities it's um, it's certainly um, not my my it's not my sole doing it is a group of people yes. and us working with the seniors yes, yes, to best yes. meet, meet the needs. Yes. So I, I you're multiplying yourself by yeah, cleaning mm -hmm. the room available for the needler. Yes. Right. And and the idea that um, when and you you said you know it looks like I enjoy my work. Well, I enjoy my work, but also the part of that enjoyment is the people that I have the opportunity to work with as well. So that's the, the staff here at the center and the other managers within the department mm -hmm. you know there's mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. a support of what I I have sensed to be or experienced a supportive working atmosphere and an interest in serving the citizens of New Westminster and that's I think over the years within the Parks and Recreation Department that's been a consistent kind of feeling and philosophy and um, there's been a fair amount of support from the community back mm -hmm. to Parks and Recreation mm -hmm. Services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're seen as a more um, integral part of the community rather mm -hmm. than an, mm -hmm. um, an add-on yeah. or an expendable item. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's important. It's very important. Very good. I wonder if I could just ask you, mm -hmm. if it's, if it's a short question. And it's, short you might say, well, it, it's, uh, I imagine you have more women than men, do you? Yes. Yes? Good question. And what would you say would be the average age? Our average age... Or what, the range yeah. of ages, yeah. I should say. Um, our uh, membership is over 2,100, give or take, I think, mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, it's three women to every mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. And the average age is 79 is and right? aging. And we have a group, a bulge in our membership that is moving through. And um, if I was a more academic researcher, and in fact, we may do something around this, there, it would be interesting to know why or how this group of people seems to have flourished and, and stuck here, stuck with Sanctuary House and is aging in place in our community because um, on average, we are an old, our center's age is older than the neighboring centers. I believe that's got something to do with the predominantly apartment 
mm -hmm. you know, the style residency mm -hmm. in this mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that uh, women, because our membership is three to one women, women um, don't tend to live in a single family residence for too long. They tend to then migrate back to an apartment. Right. Uh, right. To commute, you know, right. 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 So, um, but with it, yeah, within the men, women do it, uh, live longer, obviously, than men. But that, you know, that demographic mm -hmm. is changing as well. But having said that, um, boy, here's a here's a, just an observation. Women are tend to be more social creatures than men, mm -hmm. and have may, had the opportunity to have made those networks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Either through their working life or in their and their homemaking world life, mm -hmm. so that they're more inclined to seek out social mm -hmm. opportunities than men, and sometimes it's harder for men to mm -hmm. to um, mm -hmm. to get back into the social swing of things here. Yeah, yeah. but they they do. Um, well, that's not to say they don't, but they it's just it's not. I don't think it's as natural or easy a progression mm -hmm. for a retired man to participate on his own in a senior center yeah. versus a woman. Uh, I imagine you have a fairly recognizable cross-section of society too. I, I think one of the, you know, the, the, the people who have done very well or lived comfortably and those who don't live too mm -hmm. well and those who are maybe you could do with a great deal more, fortunately. Uh, but uh, there are two that I've discovered, men who uh, be of an approach to both coming down to the activity center uh, and you present them with a list of opportunities they might be interested in. They say, no, you got any old engines down there? I can take a brush, <laughs> you see. And uh, do I have to dress up to go to one of these things? You know, this type That's of right. And when they see people wearing all the suits and the shirts and ties, it's not for them, you know? Right. You understand that. Yeah. And yeah. I've seen that. I guess. Yeah. So you see, you, you've, I think it takes a tremendous amount of understanding, not just talent, but understanding, to work with effectively with a cross-section of, of society. And that in itself requires a lot of skill. Yes, and there are, um, and there is a real cross section. Yes. And um, and even there's a phenomenon. I don't know how far we want to get into it, but there is a phenomenon of people that were deinstitutionalized who are coming of age for membership in senior centers. Yeah. And we have um, people that are that live in group homes now. Yes. That are coming and participating yeah. as a group. Yeah. in say a fitness class or yeah. coming for the lunch program yeah. or the yeah. bingo program. Yeah. You know, and that is a previously almost unheard of yeah. Yeah. section or aging yeah. portion of our society. Um, uh, as an example, and then yes, we have people that, you know, marginally get by financially and we work with them through a subsidy program mm -hmm. so that they are able to participate in the kinds of programs that they would like to and they can do that um, with as long as they're resident of New Westminster mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, 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 the program costs are either subsidized or completely looked after for them um, yeah and um, the, the all other kind of end of the spectrum is the people that would like to go on the you know the world cruises and would like yeah, as a group yeah. of the yeah, yeah, to make yeah, those trips yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's economic yeah, it's yeah, education yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, yeah. physical ability it's mental ability yeah. well I uh, let me just say this that uh, I was very impressed with what I saw this afternoon because I took a little give myself a tour before I oh, yes, met you good. and uh, I counted about 10 different program areas yeah and rooms mm -hmm. and uh, it, named after trees oh, right. such yes. as the, the, the cedar, the, the fir, the birch, the arbutus and so forth and so on and each one of those rooms had somebody in there doing something good. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Well, it, um, and that, that was very good, you know. <laughs> and uh, in fact one chap said, uh, oh what can I do for you? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well I don't think there's very much you can do for me, or I'm just walking around here enjoying myself, you know. Mm -hmm. Hi, Alice. That's that's what you're supposed to do when you're here. 
Oh, good. So, <laughs> there well, you that's are. A, that's a, there you are. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. And uh, we may uh, meet again sometime. Well, I'm sure. And talk about something else. <laughs> That's related to the program. I hope I didn't keep it too long. I no, apologize right. for it. No, not at so all. So we have a dinner going on. We uh, certainly uh, show a lot of enthusiasm for your work, and uh, I uh, appreciate you giving me the time. Thank You're you. welcome, Dick. Thank you. <laughs>